Hey there, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. I have some mid-spring tasks I need to take care of today. Let's go. Got to get these beans trellis. These are rattlesnake pole beans and they're already starting to get, to get unruly. Well, they're not super straight. But it'll work. These over here are nice and straight. Now I'd like to have a little more height for a bean trellis, but this will have to do. I'm using this cheap net trellis. You can get this on Amazon. Just search net trellis. There's a numerous brands out there. I like the five foot wide version. I just stretch it across. My beds are four feet wide in the soil and then there's eight inches on either side. Um, and I've got a little excess actually. so. Uh, there was one grid square, I guess, of net that I didn't use, but uh, I'm stretching it taut and using three zip ties to tie it all down to the T-post, cutting off the excess there. Now these vines will begin growing up this trellis on their own, and uh, real easy system. What I'll do is I'll come back and show you uh, in the later in the video how these have grown. I did this uh, several days ago, maybe four or five days ago. And uh, so I'll show you the progress at the end of the video. Let's move on. Another task I have to complete is starting my sweet potato slips. It's not too early to think about your summer crops. Summer crops in this area have to be very heat tolerant. And well, we have heat all the way into October. So if I get my sweet potatoes in where my, where my tomatoes come out or where my peppers are done or my cucumbers are done, I can grow sweet potatoes there. Uh, they'll grow through the summer, so I don't like to start them until later in the year. I treat them as a summer crop and a late fall crop, and I'll be digging sweet potatoes probably in October, maybe even into November, it depends. I like to get my winter garden going in October, so I might need the space. Um, I've got a whole video on harvesting and growing sweet potatoes, and I'll link that right there. There are two ways I'm going to show you today to make sweet potato slips. Uh, one of them is the old school class, classroom way of submerging a potato, a sweet potato, in a glass of water, suspending it there with toothpicks. That's an easy way to get some good to it starts, and I've had them grow, you know, three feet long in that little cup of water. So we're going to do that with some of our sweet potatoes, and then I'm going to show you another way that's perhaps even easier. My storage potatoes have begun sending up slips, uh, or at least vines. The problem with this is that if you just plant this, uh, you won't get as many potatoes as you will with a new plant that's just roots and stem. The reason is this vine and these vines coming up here are going to feed off of this tuber and uh, they're going to be happy to just grow uh, sweet potato leaves for you. Um, they're not going to produce as many sweet potatoes. But if you put this in water and these little vines put out roots, then you can snap those little rooted vines off and that's called a sweet potato slip. If you plant that in the ground, you're going, to have, uh, a, you're going to have a new plant that's going to get to work at building these tubers and you're going to get more sweet potatoes. So we're going to put this in water. Water encourages these tubers to put out little shoots, uh, uh, little roots, and um, when you have a big hairy root at the bottom of one of these vines, you've got some slips. So let's, let's do that. Uh, select the ones. I can, I can see right here there's already a root coming out here. Um, there's one there. If, if you have a bunch of sweet potatoes that are sending up vines, look for the ones that already have uh, the signs that they're trying to produce roots. That's a, that's a better head start. All right, you want the pointy end down, and I'm going to put my toothpicks way up high so I can submerge as much of this potato in the water as I can. And I'm going to do just two toothpicks to suspend this in the water. So there we go, just like that. We'll take our cup of water and drop our, there's too much water in there. Drop our spud right in there, just like that. That will encourage root growth. And that's what we want. Likewise, I've got this little guy going to pin it at the top. You can go at an angle and hold it down further in the water. 
I like a little bit of it to stick out, but that's all you got to do. I notice it's floating a little bit, so we'll just pour some water out until it's not floating. That ought to work. Now you probably did this in elementary school, if you went to school anywhere like I did. And we'd have vines growing all over the classroom. That's one method, really easy, fun to do with kids. I did this a few years ago with Sam, and we got tons of sweet potatoes. Here's one I started a few days ago, and you can certainly see roots down in the water there. Now those roots will come out and form, and they will send up vines under the water, and the vines will grow upward and out of the top, while all those roots in there that you can see will remain growing, and they'll get real furry down in there. So we're off to a good start with this one. Submerge that potato in water and it will send out roots just like that. This is an effective method of making slips. Just store them. Oh, I just store them on my countertop right here. Okay, the next method involves simple potting soil. I have some depleted potting soil from last year. That's perfect. We're not going to grow these plants in this mixture for very long. We just need them to put down some roots and put up some shoots. Old potting soil is fine for that. Any kind of old potting soil like this. And what you're going to do is just bury your sweet potatoes. Out of my storage potatoes, I'm taking some of the smaller ones. And I'm just going to bury them just under the surface and keep them moist. And that's all there is to it. So let's see how many we can fit in here. I really like this purple variety. So I'm going to put more of those in here. I'll probably get four in there, two or three in that one. I've already got one in there I'm going to show you. These potatoes just go under the surface and you just cover them over with soil. They don't have to be deep. In fact, even if some of them showing, it's okay. We'll move that out of the way for, for now. But just dig you a hole, stick in a spud. I think I'll just put three in here. You could, if you wanted to, arrange them and then, then cover them, but uh, that's all you got to do. Now these potatoes <clears throat> need to be kept moist. This moisture is important. You have to keep this well watered, and that's your key to success. And once you start watering this stuff, we'll dig this one up, you'll notice it's beginning to put on some fresh growth. These shoots will grow upward, and these roots here will grow downward, and that's what you're looking for. Once you have some real healthy tall shoots, you can be assured that there are some healthy roots down there. So let's put this one over here, transfer them into here so I can put more down there. I'll take a couple of my little ones here. <clears throat> These little ones are perfect for the job. Even something like this will grow for you. You can even see there, there's some growth happening right there on the tip. This is the one I really want. This is the white fleshed O. Henry and I only had a couple of them last year so I want to make sure that I get some slips off of that one and these others are too big. If you watch my sweet potato harvesting video last year this is the one that I chopped accidentally and I told you that it would heal up this would be a perfectly good potato you just cut away that scarred part you can see it's eager to grow. All right well we've got some slips here let's water them in and we'll be into some sweet potatoes at the end of the summer. And I owe some to my friend around the corner. Again, the more moist you have your sweet potatoes, the better they will perform. I mean, just think about it. We've got some that are growing in water in cups. So you want to keep this soil pretty moist. We're encouraging root growth here. The roots are the key. And I'm just going to leave these right here in the full sun. Make sure I keep the soil nice and moist to encourage these to grow. Well, here's the beans after, oh, I guess five days. And you can see they're really growing up. They're really eager. They're wrapping around the trellis all on their own. I haven't had to do anything. These climbing beans, they find something to climb on and they'll just grow and grow 
naturally. That's why they're called pole beans. They'll climb up anything, a pole, a trellis, a net like this. And before too long, these rattlesnake pole beans will cover this entire trellis system and will be harvesting beans. Nice, huh? Well, we have onions to harvest. You know they're ready when the green part flops over and the neck is papery. This, this guy's ready to pull out. This one maybe not because the neck is still stiff and kind of plush or plump in there. Same thing here, that's not quite ready. And over here I've got some that aren't ready at all, they're still standing upright. But what we're going to have to do is figure out a way to cure these for two to three weeks. Get them all nice and dry so that they will store well. And I'll show you how to do that, but I'm not going to do that today because, well, it's not urgent. Hey, thanks for joining me on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening today. I hope you enjoyed and maybe learned some tips about sweet potato propagation, uh, how to do a simple net trellis. Um, these kind of garden tasks are enjoyable for me, and I hope they make decent content. Maybe along the way you might learn something or pick up an idea. Um, you know, we're not doing a complete how-to in these kind of videos. Do you like them? I hope so. Do you like just puttering around in the garden with me? I hope so. But, uh, well, there it is. Hey, join us on Instagram where you can check out photos from the garden. Follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. I thank you, all you new subscribers. Thank you for joining our community here. Be sure to leave a comment and uh, I look at all of those comments. Be sure to leave a comment. If you've got a question, put it down in the comment section. I'll answer it. If I can, I'll answer it honestly. And it might just make it into a question and answer video. I have one of those coming up. Hey, happy gardening to you. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.